Hi, this is Ash Whitener. And this is Justin Blinko. And welcome back to Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we explore how to build freedom through the entrepreneurial process. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and mindset needed to create your lifestyle of independence and flexibility. On December 4th and 5th, we went to Mexico City to interview some of the brightest entrepreneurs in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space at the Latin American Bitcoin Conference. We left with a number of amazing interviews, and we're really excited to share one of them with you today. Please help us out by following us on Twitter at Liberty E Podcast and Facebook slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. Show notes with links and contact info to everyone we speak with can be found on our website, libertyentrepreneurs.com. Enjoy the show. If you want to save 5 to 20% off of everything at Amazon using Bitcoin and support Liberty Entrepreneurs with no cost to you, check out the show notes at libertyentrepreneurs.com and sign up for an account with purse.io using our affiliate link. Welcome back to Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. This is still day two of the Latin American Bitcoin Conference in Mexico City. We're here with Sergio Lerner. He is the chief scientist of RSK Labs, which develops the Rootstock platform. Rootstock is a smart contract platform, which is based on the Bitcoin token. Sergio, welcome to the show. Hi, welcome. Thank you. So Sergio, give us a little bit of background. When did you get involved in Bitcoin? Oh, uh, at 2009, I was doing my university thesis uh, about uh, peer-to-peer uh, poker and how, how could people around the world play poker without needing uh, any central uh, casino or online casino. How, how could you shuffle a deck in complete security and preserve your strategy, preserve uh, your privacy, and at the same time that could be completely fair. And so I designed protocols to do that and that was my thesis. And the, the problem I had is that, okay, now I can play poker, but I don't have money to play poker, okay? Right. So there is no point. <laughs> so when, when, when Bitcoin uh, pop up, uh, uh, I said, wow, this is a fantastic match. And my, my background is in computer security, so I, I got fascinated with Bitcoin. And the first years, uh, I, I, I uh, set aside this, uh, this project of, 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 uh, of peer-to-peer poker, because the Bitcoin it was fascinating, but the scripting system that the Bitcoin has is very limited. So it does not allow you to do that. And so I started working in the security of the Bitcoin, uh, finding vulnerabilities, uh, get to know every core developer, uh, get to know the industry, work for that. And when the time came, uh, I, I started developing again the platform. And that was in uh, 2013 when, when I first developer, developed the first, it was the first Turing complete platform. It was called Quixcoin. And it was only for only gaming, but it could do a lot more. And uh, then time passed, I, I had this uh, prototype, and I realized that, okay, now, uh, Online gaming uh, and gambling is not the only way you can do. You can do a lot more. You can create financial instruments. You can help uh, financial inclusion. You can have contracts. You can have uh, uh, create uh, crypto assets, uh, uh, crowdfunding. Uh, there is a lot of things to do once you have an app, uh, uh, a smart contract platform to run programs in a deterministic and secure way. Right. So you wanted to build a platform for peer to peer gaming and you couldn't do it because of the restriction of money transfer. Bitcoin comes out and your eyes light up because you're like, this is the missing piece in what I was trying to do. So you started developing, you started getting more involved in Bitcoin and then talk to us more about the smart contracts, which you just mentioned. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, that, 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 these are just a few applications of what you can do with a smart contract platform. You can have a decentralized exchange. Uh, the the I think would be the, the first use of, uh, of the platform is to eliminate uh, third parties, to, to be able to transact in a peer-to-peer -peer way. And, and everywhere you see a third party, there, there might be a possibility to, to, to remove the third party when you uh, uh, program these contracts on a smart contract platform. So uh, basically, a, a smart contract is a program that has success to some valuables, some, some assets in a secure way and accepts messages from the outside world and can produce messages to other contracts or the outside world. And at the same time, it can accept deposits and it can send money. So you uh, give control of the money to a program. And so at the same time, this program is auditable. And so uh, it brings a lot of uh, potential in, in contracts. Right. And now, does this not already um, exist in Bitcoin? 
Oh yeah, there, there was. I mean, the, the quick swim was the first, uh, the first one. And in Bitcoin, you have, you have a, a limited scripting system, and uh, so the, the first Turing complete one, the first platform that really allows you to run arbitrary programs, was Quixcoin, and 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 then several others were developed. So in Bitcoin, you can do some things, but you don't have persistent state. So many other things you cannot do. So. Uh, by creating uh, Rootstock and by making Rootstock a sidechain, a, a Bitcoin sidechain, we are leveraging on, on all the ecosystem, the Bitcoin ecosystem, and, and the value of the Bitcoin and the network effect of the Bitcoin to bring value to Rootstock, and Rootstock brings value back to Bitcoin, creating new use cases. This is, uh, this is good for any, any, any other sidechain, any other Bitcoin sidechain and Bitcoin itself. Right, because if Rootstock is successful, it's going to bring more interest and thus more capital into bi the Bitcoin ecosystem just in general. And it should ri raise the price of Bitcoin, which further justifies and validates you know, Bitcoin's role in, in the system. Talk to us. You mentioned sidechains. I'm not sure if our audience is very familiar with sidechains. What is a Bitcoin sidechain and why is it important? Uh, a Bitcoin sidechain is a, it's a way where a second blockchain with different parameters maybe it can have different block rates or or can integrate with bitcoin and move bitcoins from one blockchain to another and this is done by a, a, a method that is called two-way peg where you can lock bitcoins in, in a in a special bitcoin script and unlock equivalent bitcoins in another platform and then you can do that back and, and transfer back the, the, the Bitcoin back, back to the, the Bitcoin blockchain. And it, it, currently, Bitcoin does not have the capabilities to do uh, this. It, uh, Root, Rootstock has, so, so one of the, the transfers can be done automatically, but the other requires some assistance. But uh, this, this can be done with a, with a federation that can have custody of these funds until we can do this hard fork in Bitcoin to be able to do this completely automatically. And the, the, the good news is that everyone agrees that this is good for Bitcoin. So there is no, almost no debate. I mean, if there's going to be a debate, it's going to be about the technical stuff, how to do that best. But there is no opposition to increase the value of Bitcoin by, by adding this functionality to create sidechains. Right. Would you say that sidechains are like a, a playground or a sandbox for Bitcoin development? without having to change the Bitcoin core, but still being able to use Bitcoin to facilitate. Yeah, yeah, correct. I mean, uh, Bitcoin has uh, a, a lot of uh, market capital, and so core developers are very conservative. And uh, sometimes they make mistakes, uh, even if, the, if they try not to, and if, it's, if there are auditors, people looking at the code. So they try to make the smallest possible uh, improvements where they can completely be uh, sure there's be, there will be no problem, and sometimes problem, problems do do slip. So this is this brings Bitcoin the, the possibility to experiment in many many different ways. You can have smart contracts, you can have an, uh, completely anonymous coins, and uh, you can have new uh, economic uh, cryptocurrencies. You can develop over a smart contract platform, like having Demorage or, or whatever you, you think you, you want to experiment with. And right. All with the security and reliability of the Bitcoin network itself. If you do these sidechains with merge mining, you can. You, you, you have to choose there. You can choose to use merge mining or to use a way that the same miners that secure the Bitcoin blockchain secure their, the, 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 the sidechain at the same time, or you can choose not to. That's free for, for, for the implementer. So what is the elevator pitch or the 30 second pitch describing Rootstock? I, I'm not the, the guy who likes to do these elevator pitches because I'm the technical guy and, and, and maybe, maybe Diego is, 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 is that guy. Oh, we'll get him on soon. Yeah, yeah. But I would say this is, this is a smart contract platform based on Bitcoin and uh, that can bring a lot of uh, added value to Bitcoin and can really incentivize and align all the interests of the Bitcoin community to, to improve. And at the same time, it's a fantastic payment network. It has 10 seconds block interval, and it can handle, at, at, at the time of the launch, uh, 300 transactions per second. So even for, for, for a payment network, it's much better than Bitcoin. So I, I think that that would be the, the, the main qualities of this, uh, this blockchain, Rootstock.
So Sergio, you come from Buenos Aires and there's obviously a, a lot of lore around the Bitcoin community in Buenos Aires and the entrepreneurship. This is an entrepreneurial podcast. So could you tell us a little bit about the entrepreneurial environment in Buenos Aires and what people are rallying around right now? Well, there, there, there has been a lot of uh, involvement in Bitcoin in, 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 from the com from the entrepreneurs. Uh, um, the, there is the, the Fundación Bitcoin Argentina, which uh, really uh, tries to, to to create a space where all these companies can 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 share uh, physical space. They can they can see if there is synergy together. And myself, I'm a promoter of uh, of many um, startups. I, I founded in, in the last two years four Bitcoin startups. Uh, who are complete success. Uh, Whiny, Whiny Loans is a peer-to-peer -peer, um, uh, lending platform for, for Latin America, and it's doing great. And we have CoinFabric. It's a software factory specialized in, in, in Bitcoin development, which is doing projects for all over the world. And I have CoinSpect. CoinSpect is a, a, a security auditing company. That was what I was doing before Rootstock. And and whatever you 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 get the right people, uh, and 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 because the Bitcoin technology is really fascinating, then they jump into Bitcoin. So it's a, it's a very yeah. You find the people with the right passion, and then it's very easy to 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 spread the word and to create these these companies. Is the 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 team that's creating Rootstock are they mostly based in Buenos Aires? Are are you guys physically together, or how does that model work? Yeah, we work physically in the same place. And we have we have two offices. One is in the Fundación Bitcoin, uh, just to be near other companies, and then we have our own offices. And and yeah, we are six people currently in the team, and uh, and we we really work well with with each other. All, all we are from Buenos Aires. So I know you've got a ton of people that want to talk to you, Sergio. I got one more question to ask you. If there's a young developer out there, a young programmer who's starting to learn about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, what advice would you give them to, to start breaking into the sector and start networking and such? Well, I had to give this advice uh, two years ago or to, to, to a friend of mine. And uh, what, what I did, uh, I, I told him, OK, just go to the Bitcoin org website Try to learn as much as you can, and then I will give you a job because I have some ideas I want to develop. And, uh, and when, when, he, when he got that very small amount of knowledge that he could, got, he, he could get in one week, uh, he started working, and after one month, he was an specialist in Bitcoin. There were very few people in the world that knew what he knew in just one month, just being completely focused. And then, Companies from all over the world came to him because he was one of the few Bitcoin programmers that knew completely well one of the Bitcoin uh, platforms, which was uh, Bitcoin J. So in a very short time, he became uh, a, a, a Bitcoin programmer for all, all of, from projects from all over the world. So what I say to programmers is that there is a huge opportunity to become uh, to become expert in this field because there are very, very few programmers who can really take one, uh, one, uh, one wallet and make some modifications or, or take one, uh, one, one of these cryptocurrency platforms and, and correct some, some, some mistakes. So it's a great opportunity if you're a programmer, for example, to, to, to go and become an expert in this technology. Sergio, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Bye-bye. Right,